If you want to make money as a developer, you have to master these five skills. So if you're a career changer and you want to make sure that you are doing all the right things and you can maximize and secure that first developer job, you have to pay attention to this video. So I'm a self-taught developer. I taught myself how to code years and years ago and I've made all the mistakes and I'm going to tell you exactly what you have to optimize so you don't have to suffer through years of frustration, waste potential money that you could be making. So let's get into the video. There are five skill categories that you have to be aware of. The first one is problem solving and problem solving is split into three subcategories. The first subcategory of problem solving is a way of thinking called first principles. And what first principles is going to teach you is how to take a big problem, like a big task, a big challenge that you have, and you learn that you can split that problem into smaller problems. Okay? And then the idea behind this way of thinking is that if you split a big problem into smaller problems, then you can start tackling each smaller problem individually until you manage to solve the bigger problem. But what if you cannot solve the small problem? With first principles thinking, you will learn that you can split the smaller problem into even smaller chunks that you can try to solve. If that doesn't work, you split the, the small chunks into even smaller chunks until you have something to work with, something that you can start solving. Okay, so this is uh, the best way of thinking that I've uh, found about in the last few years. I've been doing it for years before I even knew it was called like this. And uh, if you learn how to think like this, your life is gonna change dramatically. First principles is not gonna only help you when you try to solve a coding problem, but it's gonna help you in your life in general. So let's say you are right now stuck in uh, tutorial. Then you start to define what tutorial hell is. Well, tutorial hell is when you follow along coding courses and you feel like you understand whatever the tutor is teaching you, but you cannot put into practice whatever you have to do by yourself, right? So that's kind of how tutorial hell works. And then you start to think about if I want to build an app, let's say a to-do app, because you've been copy pasting to-do apps for a very long time, you can start to split uh, to the to-do app into smaller parts. Like for example, what would be a data structure that can be used to create a to-do app? Then you'll be like, okay, maybe an array, right? So now you have one piece. Then another uh, problem that you might find out about is how can I add some text into my array? Then you figure out that you need an input, maybe a form, maybe an event listener on the form or on the input, etc. So with first principles thinking, you can solve every single problem that you have in your life, guaranteed, okay? Like literally every single problem. You get better at first principles thinking the way, the more you do it, okay? So it's a skill. Every single thing that I'm gonna teach you in this video, it's learnable and you can absolutely learn it. Now, the next sub skill of problem solving is your ability to do research. So there is no other skill that's gonna take you further than research because all the information is out there. It's either in a book, in a video, in a document, in a PDF, or ChatGPT, in a Reddit uh, thread. The information is out there, but your ability to search is what's gonna get you that information. Now, when you're a beginner, you need to understand that you do not have yet this skill well developed. And as you are progressing in your career, as you are uncovering the GTA map, as you are exploring this part, this part, you are killing this person here, this person there, you are stealing these drugs from there, blah, blah, blah. In GTA, I mean, you start to uncover the map, right? In the beginning, you are dropped in one place on the map, everything is gray around you. And as you move around, the map becomes, uh, I guess, lighter or it has more details, right? So as you do that, your ability to research is gonna increase because you start to, create a vocabulary, okay? You start to become more flexible with your language. You start to become more refined with your language so you can create better queries, okay? So this is super important. You should learn it. And if you're not good at it, don't worry. You're gonna get better at it with time as you are learning new stuff. Then the next sub skill from the main skill of problem solving is critical thinking. Your ability to be cold and unaffected emotionally by what is happening around you whenever you have a coding problem or whenever you send out a resume to like 3,000 people or like you send 3,000 applications and you are not getting any response back instead of like falling uh, down to how you feel emotionally 
try to understand that if you keep your calm and you are collected and cool about it, you'll be able to find the problem because you cannot solve problems when you are charged with negative emotions. When you feel like the world is falling apart on you, you cannot think critically, you cannot reason, you cannot problem solve, you cannot use first principles thinking to solve your own problems. So you need to be able to keep yourself cool and you need to learn how to not give a fuck about everything else but your problem. And you know, in the long run, you know, some people quit when uh, they have a very negative emotional charge around the situation, they quit just to look back after a few years and regret the fact that they quit. It's very sad in my opinion because you sometimes have only one or two shots in life to make it happen. Because time is limited, I'm gonna be 30 in like a couple of weeks and I'm already seeing my mortality. When I was 20, you know, I was more free. I didn't really care about stuff. You know, I was dicking around too much. And now I realize like, oh shit, I need to lock in. I need to lock in with my diet. I need to be better in the gym. I need to get my shit together. So please, for your own sake, Whenever you are in a situation where everything seems like it's falling apart, relax, it's okay. Nothing bad is happening, for real. In a few months, you'll even forget about this. So just learn how to sit there in the seat, put your seat belt on, put your helmet on, and go back to coding. It's not as bad as it seems in the moment. Now, believe it or not, the next skill set is to know how to program. It's absolutely incredible to see how many people have finished a bootcamp or they are self-taught and they don't know how to code even after two, three, four, five years. It's incredible. So many people think that if they know how to install VS Code or if they have an account on GitHub, they are entitled to a job. Well, it doesn't work like that in the real world. You actually have to be able to program, create applications and solve business problems, okay? So here are the two sub-skills that you need to learn or master if you want to be good at programming. The first thing is to master your language. In this case, let's talk about JavaScript because this channel is about full stack development, front end development, right? So when it comes to mastering your language, you should know you the basic API, AKA your array methods, your string methods. You should know uh, how to make an API call. You should know how to set up timers, how to set up uh, event listeners, etc., etc., without having to Google anything you should definitely know that. If you do not know that, I'm sorry, but you do not deserve to call yourself a JavaScript developer. There is a moment in time where it's okay for you not to know certain things, right? But you should aim and strive to be that person that even though it's impossible, try to become that person that doesn't need to Google anything. And it might sound like it's impossible, right? Because you see those memes with programmers saying they have to Google everything. It's not true. Programmers, like good programmers, don't Google everything all the time. I have met really good developers who were like literally in the code editor every single moment. They weren't Googling anything and they were building really complex stuff. And I was feeling inferior compared with them. And my aim was to get to that point where I can just write code without even checking my console log, without checking any outputs, without checking any uh, uh, anything on Google or Stack Overflow. That was my aim. Have I managed to reach that level? No, but that is my goal to be able to do that. Because imagine, let's say you are traveling uh, to Spain or even better, you are moving to Spain and then you are saying, okay, I want to make some friends. Well, imagine the situation where every single time you want to open a conversation with someone, even though it's the same conversation that you would have every single day, instead of like remembering how to create a phrase, like a basic phrase or basic sentence, every single time you pull up your phone and you search for a word or like for a basic sentence in your dictionary. In the beginning, in your first few days, that would be fine, you know, but if you are there for like two, three years and you are still pulling up your dictionary or like a, one of those books, like the fat books, then you'll be a bit embarrassed, right? Uh, because you won't be able to have a conversation with someone if every single time you have to translate a word or, and so on. This is gonna make you less confident in your abilities. And also it's gonna make you slower because every single time you have to stop yourself from doing something to check uh, on Google or to check an output on your console because you don't understand how the API works, 
uh, that you'll just slow yourself down because you know when you switch context you're like your brain needs time to go back to readjust okay so that's that then you should also know uh, your tech stack so if you're choosing something like react you should definitely know how use effect works how use ref works how classes work how context works you should be able to set up all those things by yourself without Google. Someone is going to see this video, some ultra nerd is going to see this video and is going to say, oh, this guy is not right, blah, blah, blah. And I understand them. That's their opinion. But in my opinion, you should be able to do all those things to call yourself a React developer or a front-end developer. Or if you are working with Vue, you should be able to do that in Vue. And again, this is going to take time. It's not going to be an overnight thing, but it should be your aim to get better at this uh, as you're progressing in your career. Now, the next skill, that you have to master is interviewing and i was thinking about this yesterday i was coming back from uh, from the gym which conveniently is just across the road so it wasn't a very long uh, thought process if that makes sense and i was thinking like jesus we we are being told you know english in my case romania and i'm not really good at that uh, we've been taught maths physics chemistry what else we've been taught i've been taught religion for 12 years in school we've been indoctrinated with that and uh, we've never been told how to interview, how to pass an interview for a job. We've never been told how to write a resume, right? We've never been told how to persuade someone in an interview or how to hold a conversation. Isn't this crazy if you really think about it? It's ultra crazy in my opinion. Now, so my, go my advice for you is if you don't know how to write a resume, buy a course or how to write a resume. I do not sell a course or writing resumes i bought a bunch of them some of them are okay but you have to buy and research by yourself i personally found that the best way is to just pay someone to make me a resume so i found a guy that does it for me for like 200 bucks uh, and i have those resumes in my program and then i give them to people because i have no idea how to write a good resume okay i mean i do have an idea but if you ask me to start writing a resume from scratch, I would be a bit lost, you know? So that's the easiest shortcut and it's gonna give you a massive ROI, which stands for return of investment. So you spend 200 bucks, but you're gonna have, get a 100K job, given that you have the skills, okay? If you don't have the skills, the resume, it doesn't matter. Now the next uh, sub skill from the interview section, skill set section, is uh, people skills and again we're not being taught how to speak with people it's like one of those things you either have it or not but every single skill can be learned it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if it's a hard skill or a soft skill like people skills are soft skills you can measure how good you become at talking to people so for example let's say you are extremely introverted you cannot speak with a person for if, even if you're life will depend on it i don't believe that's the case but let's just assume let's just play this game let's imagine this scenario so the first that you can try is to walk on the street and try to hold contact eye contact with someone for half a second do that 10 times next day try to do it for one second same same setup again 10 people right now you learned a bit of eye contact then the next thing that you can do the following day would be to smile, right? Then let's say you go to a coffee shop and ask the barista what their name is and so on and so forth. So as you can see with the first principles thinking, I can figure out what does it mean to have social skills. I can break this process down and then I can train every single aspect of it. It's actually not easy, but it's simple. You just have to realize that you have a problem and then you can start working on it. It's, uh, it's as straightforward as that. You just have to have the right motivation to actually do it, okay? Now, a couple of books that I can recommend you are 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. Those will teach you how people think, like what people are motivated by. And then another one is called Influence by Robert Cialdini or Cialdini, I don't know exactly how to say his name. But those will give you an insight into what's happening behind behind the psyche of a human okay because we are all kind of operating with the same goals so every person is pretty much the same now the last skill that i want to talk about is mastering your time so i'm not an expert in this i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna be here like oh look at me i'm ali abdal and i have like every hour of my day blocked out okay 
I'm not that type of person, but I'm in a position where I can work on one thing the whole day, right? My problem is that I do not have hobbies, right? I don't do fun stuff. But if you are in that position where you have to work a full-time job, right? Maybe you have kids, maybe you have to attend a certain event every single day or every other day for whatever reason. You need to set up a structured day using a Google Calendar. That's gonna help you massively. It's free, just start by crafting the next day. Maybe create a to-do list. I started working with that. I'm trying to figure out how that would work for me, okay? Maybe I'm gonna make a video about this later. But start designing your days even though they might be the same, start designing your days, be a bit more intentional about how you manage your time because in this day and age, we have the gift of not having to go to a war. You can eat, you can drink, you can sleep, right? You have a pretty good life compared with our ancestors like 50, 100 years ago. So because of that, we have a lot of free time. Even though you might be working a lot, you have a lot of free time compared with what used to happen like eight years ago when people were in the trenches killing each other in the World War II. Now, that comes with a responsibility. Great power comes with great responsibility. So you are 100% responsible over your time and you have to realize that if you do not sacrifice one year, if you have the right guidance, if you have the right work ethic, which is another skill that you can learn, if you manage your calendar, you can do this in one year, maybe a year and a half. You just have to sacrifice for one year. You have to suck it up for one year. So then the return from that is gonna be you making more money, maybe doubling, maybe tripling your salary. I don't know exactly your situation, but you can go on Indeed and check how much from the developer is making on average versus you, and then you do the maths. Is it worth it for you to, to, to sacrifice one year of your life to triple, double, triple your income and to also have more time on your hands? And I don't even want to talk about like the other opportunities that will come from having a developer job. You now have a skill that you can use to build your next app. You can create integrations for companies. You can add another skill on top of that. You can start building your own SaaS. Like there are so many things like you can take the money, invest it into real estate, invest it into stocks, uh, buy cryptos, whatever you want to do. Like you'll have more money, more freedom. And that comes by mastering these five skills that I mentioned today. So I hope this video is helpful to you. I'm sorry because of the way I'm speaking right now, but I have sinusitis and it's very hard for me to like breathe properly. That's why I might not sound as good as in other videos. I hope I was sounding good in other videos, but I hope you'll have a great rest of your day. Peace out.